What's good YouTube? It's your boy Zay. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I'm super excited because last week I put out a call to see what you guys wanted to hear and you have spoken. So moving forward, what I plan to do is shout out to y'all for my new show. It's going to be called Setup Sunday. So today is the very first episode of Setup Sunday. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through some technical analysis. Now, I'm going to sauce it up a little bit. So it's not going to be just a bland show. Like what we're going to talk about is what to look for the week ahead in the market. We'll look at all the different indexes. Uh, we'll look at a few charts, talk about the setups that we see for the week, what levels to watch for. Uh, and then just as an added on gym, we'll talk about support and resistance, how you spot it, how you can use it. So if you like what you hear, definitely press the like button as well as the subscribe button. Don't forget to press that notification bell so that way when the next episode comes out, you get that notification. Without further ado, guys, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so we're going to jump right into it. So the first things that we need to be paying attention to this upcoming week in the market is, of course, Brother Jerome Powell again. So this is an article straight from CNBC. I love reading this article every Friday. They come out with it, and essentially they tell you what we need to be watching for in the week ahead. So as you can see, the main title says the Fed could be a source of market volatility as Powell and others speak in the week ahead. So as you guys know, last week, Brother Powell had his FOMC meeting where he came out and basically reiterated that, hey, we're not going to be raising interest rates until about 2023. They also raised their uh, GDP forecast um, coming out of that meeting. So, you know, essentially come, coming out of that meeting, you know, investors were hoping that um, Jer Jerome Powell was going to say, hey, you know, I'm going to raise rates or, you know, try to put a cap. Um, so those uh, yields aren't going to just keep running. And so as you can see here, uh, this this past week, the 10 year, which um, most people equate to like mortgages and the banks use to equate to mortgages and stuff like that when they're giving out loans. So this reached a high of 1.75%, which is the highest in the past 14 months. So we are now getting back to pre-pandemic levels. Now, this is important because ultimately, as these yields rate, uh, rise, uh, it's a basically an impact on high growth stocks because those growth stocks are based on, you know, future earnings. And so as interest rates go up, essentially those earnings will not be as much because rates are higher. So that's the reason why they're making all this noise in the news about interest rates going up and how it's hurting tech and how it's hurting growth companies, because essentially they're saying, look, if rates keep going up, you know these these future earnings that these growth companies were were counting on. It's just not going. Be, it's not going to be as much. But I mean, we all know that's a lie. Um. So yeah. So that's one of the things we need to be watching out for. Uh, another thing in this article that they highlighted um, is that, of course, the inflation. So we need to continue to just you know watch out for this whole inflation. They keep making it like a big argument. But as you can see, the Fed is basically trying to let it run hot. So in this article, uh, you can see that for this year, um, they're saying that inflation can go to 2.4%. But a lot of investors or people who are watching the market are like, basically, stand, not necessarily standing on the sideline, but they're worried that, hey, we could overshoot. Um, they don't think it's just going to be temporary, as uh, Brother Powell has said, or, you know, Jay Powell is talking about, he thinks it's just going to be a temporary thing as the market adjusts to rates normalizing and just the, the economy reopening. He thinks it's just one of those temporary things. And others think that, hey, with all this stimulus y'all done pumped into the system and, you know, with people coming back out and spending money that they think inflation is going to be a lot worse. So that's why, you know, we're having that that tug of war. Um and so really, you know, again, the market is just going to probably be on a standstill looking out for what uh, Brother Powell says, um, not to mention the week after quadruple witching, which was just this past Friday, is typically a slow week in the market. So please, you know, just watch out for volatility, watch out for uh, when Brother Powell speaks and a few others. And so that's, you know, something that we need to be paying attention to now. How does that equate into technicals, right? So let's get into the technicals. Let's actually look at some charts and let's talk about levels we need to be paying attention to. And then ultimately we're gonna transition into support and resistance. So let's get into um, some charts for the week. 
All right, guys. So the first chart we're going to go through is the SPX. That's the S&P 500. And I'm going to just give you guys a quick summary of what I'm seeing and kind of what I anticipate for next week. So looking at the week ahead, right? So this is where we finish uh, this past week. On Friday, we had a close of 39.13. Now, this is the SPX on a weekly chart. And so what it's giving me or the signals that I'm seeing or the vibes that I'm getting is that ultimately I could see us maybe pop back up to this 39.25 like we did on this candle right here, the week of uh, February 22nd. And ultimately, because I'm expecting volatility, as well as, you know, we know that Brother Powell speaks twice this week. It looks like the S&P 500 actually wants to go back down and test this 3780 level. Um, and if we make it down, we definitely need to see support here. We need to hold that because that's also where our 20 day moving average is likely to meet. Right now, let's say if we we break that. Uh, the next level of support we'll be looking for is around 3718, 3700, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, if that doesn't hold, then it's pretty much all she wrote for the S&P 500. I definitely could see us headed down to 3510. Now, I'm not seeing all of that is going to happen next week, but these are just the moves that I'm anticipating in the coming weeks. So next week is definitely going to be huge for the S&P 500 to see where we finish. Uh, and what levels are or what levels of support are touched and can ultimately hold. So that's the S&P 500. Let's get into the NASDAQ. All right, guys, now looking at the NASDAQ, same situation as the S&P 500. As you can see, last week we closed at 13,215. We couldn't quite crack the 13,300, which is uh, 13,300, which is acting as a very, very heavy resistance point for the uh, NASDAQ here. So ultimately what I will be watching for coming into this next week is again, I, it's giving me vibes that the NASDAQ wants to probably come back down and retest this 12,875 area. Uh, if that does not hold, we could possibly come back down and retest that 12,448, 450. So basically 12,500. And uh, guys, again, if that level does not hold, oh man, it could be, we could be in for uh, some tough sled in these, these last couple of weeks of March. So again, with the NASDAQ, I'll be watching that to the downside. However, to the upside for the NASDAQ, if we can hold say 12,875 or so, and we can get us a good bounce, the actual level that I will be watching for us to really capture uh, would be once we get above that 13.3, I'll be looking for us to take on about 13.5. So if we can get to about 13,500, that would be great. If we can just close above 13,300 next week, that would be even better. So, you know, for the NASDAQ, I'll be watching that closely. And just to give you guys a, a closer view on that, this is what it looks like on a daily chart here. Uh, as you can see, we, uh, Friday, we did close just under that 20-day that uh, moving average and it's still actually sloping down and it just crossed our uh, 50 day exponential moving average, which is usually a bearish sign. Um, so, you know, we definitely are going to have to pay attention to the volatility in the NASDAQ. As you know, as the yields have been going up, the NASDAQ has just been taking a pounding. As you can see, the correction started about February 16th and it's just been getting molly <laughs> So going into next week, as you can see, we definitely want to close, get back above this 50-day exponential movement average here. Um, definitely expecting some volatility. As you can see, the bands are starting to close. So next week is definitely going to be interesting. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to actually take a look at the SPY and the QQQs, because I know a lot of people trade those. So just to give you a quick analysis on the SPY and the QQQs. So first, we're going to jump into the SPY. All right, family, so the SPY, you can see here, I got some, some critical support levels marked. I got 385.24 and about 380.20. Now you can always round up or round down, but ultimately what we see here, now this is the SPY on a daily chart. Uh, you can see we basically closed right at 389. We came and tapped that 20 day uh, moving average here and we bounced up and closed right above it. However, Again, I'm getting, I'm just getting, I'm getting retraced vibes from, from the market. And just knowing that the week after quadruple witching is such a slow week, I'm definitely paying attention more to the downside than I am to the upside. So for the SPY, 
It's looking like we want to come touch this 50 day moving average, which is about 385. If we can hold here, likely we can get a nice bounce and head back to 400. If not, we're definitely going to be coming back down to test this 380. And then from 380, we could expect a nice bounce, right? Um, and so that's on the, uh, that's on the SPY. So, uh, and don't laugh, I still got the free version of TradingView. Ain't no reason to pay for it. Um, and I also use a few other sites. So, but I hate those damn pop ups. But anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm looking for in the SPY. So let's hop over to the QQQs real quick. Uh, for the QQQs, this is basically what I am watching here. We uh, are right at that 313, another very, very critical support area for the Qs. Uh, so if you like trading the NASDAQ and the triple Qs, this might be an index that you're looking at. So ultimately, what I am watching for is that we need. We need to get above this 315. And once we get above 315, 316, we need to be closing in on about 320 for us to get our momentum back to the bullish side. So next week, uh, what I will be paying attention to to see ultimately, do we come back down uh, to test about 307? So actually, let me, I could move that up so you guys can see. So about 307 is that next area of support. So as you can see, once again, 20 day moving average is still pointing down. We didn't close above it, which is not a good sign. However, based on just technical patterns that I do know, this is giving me signs of a reversal trend. And if we can get a nice bullish candle on Monday, we could, you know, potentially start our uptrend uh, in the QQQs. So that is the QQQs. Now, something else to pay attention to, guys, that we'll look at real quick is the VIX, right? So a lot of people pay attention to the VIX. This is known as the fear and greed index or known as, you know, uh, that gauge of, of seeing how fearful or, uh, of people are in the market. However, it, it's also a good gauge of how many people are actually buying puts. Who's buying protection on their portfolio? So when you see these big green candles, that's typically people buying puts and hedging uh, because they believe the market is going down. Well, actually, this is typically the times when the market is going down. So they're buying that protection. Uh, or that hedge against themselves. So basically what we see is last week, the VIX did close at 21. Um, and ultimately what I'm getting here is again, is that either we could look to be going more to the downside and really closing for the first time under 20 in the 1918 range since about last year. Um, or we could be setting up for another big bounce and getting more volatility to the upside. Uh, so the VIX is something else to watch for. So we had heavy rejection uh, right here at that 23 level, as you can see. Um, so we're hoping that the VIX can stay down. So that's another thing to pay attention to is the VIX levels. And just to give you guys a, a, a full range perspective, here's something that I do want to show you. So this is the VIX. Uh, actually, I wanted to show it on a, on a weekly level. So this is the VIX on a weekly level. And what I want to point out really quick about the VIX is that here is February 18, 2020. And this is right when the pandemic really started. And as you can see, there was a there's a gap here. But then we just kind of just started going crazy because this was the whole, you know, Corona crash essentially right here. You 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 basically could see this is the Corona crash and we started to come down. But ultimately, I'm pointing out this gap because if anybody knows technical analysis, you know all gaps typically all gaps get filled. Now this they we are the VIX is really trying to close this gap right here, right? Now we've gotten pretty close, right? As the um, as your exponential moving averages have been rising, we literally just touched uh, our 200 day around 18.8 last week. And so with that, that's trying to signal that, hey, the market is trying to get back to normalization. Now, are we quite ready for that? We're going to find out because ultimately what I see here in this technical pattern is that you got this bearish candle we've got the hammer now this could be setting us up for a, a hell of a green candle where we test about 28 on the vix which is going to scare a whole hell of a lot of a people because ultimately that means the market is going to be coming down people will be buying protection and again knowing what we know going into this week this is definitely something we have to prepare for is that worst case scenario now i'm giving you guys worst case scenario best case scenario could be is that we actually uh, volatility breaks downwards and the market starts to normalize and we actually have a close around 18.8 signaling, signaling that the market is now normal um, and as we said or as i said uh, the next thing that i would also take a look at is the u.s uh, 10 year uh, yields because this is what is causing a lot of grief right and it's not that the fact that it's going up 
is how fast it's been going up. So as you can see, this thing has been running. Ever since February 1st, we have not had a down week on the U.S. 10-year. And if I give you guys a monthly view, you can actually see here what is actually taking place. This is the start of the corona crash. January 2020, February 2020, March 2020. Rates just, just bombed. And so essentially what's happening now is we are now getting back to normalization before the pandemic. So a lot of people are saying, hey, the U.S. Uh, 10 year treasury could possibly run up to about 1.95, 2.0. And that's ultimately when, um, you know, we, we would expect to see some heavy resistance. Uh, it's for tech guys. You're invested in growth. If we get above this 1.95 or 2.0 very soon, that's when, you know, we want to watch out. I think uh, if we get up to this two and we can kind of, you know, start to normalize and just start trading in the range, I think that'll be good for tech because if you study um, history, you'll see that, yes, uh, we can have raising in rising interest rates and, yes, tech can still grow at the same time. So I just want to put that out there. But this is the U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury note that I'm watching. So continue to watch that. We closed at 1.71. Uh, right above this uh, resistance point right here. So we could see another push this week up to about 1.95 or so. I'd hate to see that happening. That's just going to be more temporary pain in the markets. But, um, you know, the market is just trying to stabilize and digest these things. Um, and so that's another thing I'm keeping my eye on. The last two, and then we'll get into the chart of the week, and then we'll actually get into the lesson of the week, which is support and resistance. So uh, another thing to keep your eye on is Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is another great way to keep an eye on the market. So as you can see, I'm going to change this to a weekly. And as you can see, Bitcoin has just been rocking it out. And uh, I'm not a Bitcoin bear or anything like that, but I definitely thought that once we crossed uh, or hit this around 40,000 mark, that we will ultimately correct back down to the 20,000 level and then shoot for, say, 50K, 100K. But this thing just kept chugging along. So, you know, ultimately, though, I do feel like it's coming down to its end. Uh, and Bitcoin is known for hell of historical drawdowns. Uh, so we could be in for one hell of a drawdown on Bitcoin. Uh, again, I'm not a Bitcoin bear, but you just have to have studied the history to know that from about March to August is a very slow period for Bitcoin. Um, and if we have the typical drawdown that Bitcoin has, which is roughly around, you know, anywhere from 50 to 60, well, really it's like 70, 80 percent. But I think now that institutions are involved, it's not going to be as heavy. But if we saw a, say, 50 to 60 percent drawdown or correction over a period of time in Bitcoin, I just want to I want to give you guys a quick preview of where Bitcoin could actually go back to. So. Let me just uh, give myself some more room. So we go to about August, September, right? If we look at Bitcoin, and if I just do a, a drawdown, uh, say, let's just do 50%. And I'm going to do it to around uh, September. That would put Bitcoin right back at the target of around 30,000. Now, a lot of people don't believe that is possible. I, on the other hand, I still am holding true that I do think eventually Bitcoin will correct down to about 20K. And if and when that happens, I will definitely be loading the boat. But for now, the bulls are just kicking ass right now and winning the battle. Uh, Bitcoin is still pumping. So in the interim, we could see Bitcoin ultimately get a pump up to about, say, 63,000 or so, maybe try to make a push to 65K before, you know, she's had enough. So I'll definitely be watching Bitcoin in the upcoming weeks, as you can see. Um, she's definitely starting to struggle to hold that 56 level a little bit here. So just something else to keep your eye on is watching these Bitcoin levels. And the last of the cryptos that I keep an eye on is Ethereum. Now, if you don't know about Ethereum, I highly suggest you guys to go study Ethereum. I think Ethereum is definitely going to be the platform of the future as far as DeFi goes and just... Think about uh, Ethereum as being the Windows or the iOS for crypto. You know, it's going to be that main um, platform that other cryptos run on and are able to process transactions on. And that's going to make Ethereum very, very, um, very, very useful. Like everybody's going to want to use it. And so therefore, 
definitely consider getting you some uh, Ethereum tokens. This is not investment advice. Uh, this is for entertainment and educational purposes only. However, I invested in Ethereum. Think very highly of it. So the levels I'm watching for Ethereum, as you can see, uh, this basically 2000 has been acting as a heavy, heavy resistance area. As you can see, right around 1925 or so, if I bring this down, uh, 1939, you can see it's been acting as resistance. Uh, we did come down and test around 12, uh, 12, about 1280, 1286. We got a nice bounce and now we're kind of just trading sideways, but you can see the 50 day exponential moving average as well as our 20 day moving average is pointing up. And one of the things about Ethereum in the Bitcoin relationship is that Ethereum is still lagging behind Bitcoin as far as market dominance. And typically what happens is that when you have a big run in Bitcoin, some of that money will start to trickle out of Bitcoin and go into Ethereum. Uh, and then, you know, you'll have your altcoin run, but Enough of that. That's my whole past life. So I just wanted to give you guys uh, just a quick insight into what these cryptos are doing. So let's get into the chart of the week. And then ultimately, we'll get into the lesson of the week. So the chart of the week is Apple. So let's take a look at Apple. Uh, if we go to Apple on a weekly chart, you can see that I have my resistance or support level at 116.58 as well as I have resistance right around 128, 23 or 128. So looking at how we finished last week, guys, not a good sign. So we finished at 119.99, uh, which signals to me that Apple looks like she wants to try to come down and test that 116 again. And uh, if 116 doesn't hold, guys, ultimately, I feel like she will be looking to come down and test right around 112. Uh, 111 or so. So when we're looking at Apple this week, the things we want to pay attention to is if we come test this 116, do we get a nice bounce? And then we come back up to say 122. Uh, and from there, can, you know, can we continue our progress to get back to 128? Or if we break 116, looks like we'll probably come one test 112 and ultimately look to get a rebound or a bounce around that area. So the upcoming week, that's what I'll be watching for Apple. Uh, again, this is a weekly chart. So if I go down to the day chart, just to give you guys a better view, you can see like, a snip, you know, we, we didn't finish above our 20 day uh, moving average here, which is not a good sign. So it looks like we may want to come retest this 116 one good time. And then from there, we'll start to bounce up to that 128. As you can see, our 50 day moving average is right around 129, 130. So that's definitely something to watch for. Right now, we're just basically in the middle of a trading zone. If we do get this 116, that could be a good area to actually load up on some Apple. So again, don't take my advice. This is just for educational purposes only. So I hope you guys enjoyed those charts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually get into the lesson of the week. And so we're going to start talking about support and resistance, guys. So a lot of people have asked about support and resistance. And so the way that I'm going to teach this or try to show this to you guys is we are going to use the SPY as our main, I guess, ticker, right? Um, and so what I wanna do in this part of the episode is let's get into support and resistance, right? So first let's talk about what is, or what's, you know, what is support and resistance, right? So essentially support and resistance represents the levels where, uh, or the technical levels where stock finds support, meaning, hey, oh, this is where buyers step in, right? This is a price that buyers like to buy this particular stock at. And, the, and for resistance, resistance just means, hey, this is a particular spot or price action that uh, people like to start selling this particular stock. Now, there's, I'm going to say this with a caveat, right? There's There can be many support resistances depending upon the type of trading you're doing as well as the time frame you are looking at, okay? I want to make that very clear. So for me, I'm a long-term trader, swing trader, right? So I'm not really into looking at 15-minute charts or hourly charts or anything like that because you, but you can break a chart down to those levels and find support and resistance between those levels. And that's how intraday traders trade, right? But what I'm going to show you is just the foundation. And then if you want to apply it to day trading, you do the same exact thing. So I'm going to give you guys the quick and easy how to find support and resistance. The very first thing you want to do, guys, if you are looking at a chart, is change your chart 
from candles or whatever it is you're looking at to a line graph, right? Because ultimately, when you're looking for support and resistance, you are looking for what I call pivot points. Where do you ultimately see, okay, when it hits this price action, it's an automatic bounce or what I like to call a pivot. You can call it peaks and valleys, right? Just like, a, just like hills or mountains, you have peaks and valleys. So you want to look for those peaks and valleys because ultimately that is signaling to you whether it's a resistance point or, it's a, or if it's support. So if we are looking at the SPY, easily I can identify a couple of areas of support as well as resistance, right? So if you were looking to identify a level of support on the SPY, all you got to do is find the low uh, valleys. Boom. So you got a key pivot point here. You got a key pivot point here. So you now have found two support levels on the SPY. You know that because you have multiple touch points, you got a touch point here, you got a touch point here, it broke through, but then it came back down. And ultimately this, so when it was here, it was serving as resistance, right? Now it finally broke through and ultimately uh, this kind of served as an interim short-term support level, but we kept going up and ultimately we came back down. We found support again at this uh, 370 and we bounced and we bounced even higher. So as you can see, uh, coming from these levels, it was resistance. Ultimately, we, we broke back down. We went through it. We kind of retested it, came back through. We bounced off of it again. This time we bounced high, right? Just trying to just trying to try it out, see how, how we could get. We got to 381, came back to retest this level. We got back higher, but ultimately we hit a level of resistance at this 383. Now, when you see something like that, Ultimately, you can add a level here. So, and I'm actually gonna change this color because this is actually a sign of resistance, right? So now we have resistance at 384. Again, we're just looking for like key levels. Now I could add another one, say right here where we're, where we're currently at 389. As you can see, we had some trouble getting through uh, and then we kind of started to retreat here. So what does that look like if we change it back to candles, right? So now that you've, you've changed it to a line graph, You've marked a couple of levels. And as you can see, you have we have four levels marked, 369, 376, 384, 389. And if you want, we can even do the top, 397. This is how easy it is or how easy it can be to identify support and resistance. Now, where what might catch some people up is how do you know which level is support and which one is resistance? Well, at this current moment, you can tell that 397 is a resistance level, 389 is a resistance level, 384, we kind of just sitting in the middle. It was prior resistance, but now it could be actually looking to turn into support. And then we know for sure 376 is support and 369 is a level of support. So if we change it back to candles, this is why I love using the line graph as a cheat code, because if I change it back to candles, I can validate it. So here's how I validate it. When I get to 369, what has typically happened when I've hit in this area? Well, we got buy pressure here, buy pressure here. Even when we hit here, we kind of sold off a little bit, but we ended up coming back. So I really wouldn't count this candle, but I'd also look at this candle as to say, hey, we did sell off at 376. So that was a prior resistance before, but this is also because we were basically on our ride up. So what I want to start is from January. So if you're looking at a chart, January, we, we got buying pressure here, buying pressure here. All right. Again, buying pressure here. It went, it, it went down a little bit and then it came back up. We closed here, but then the next day it went back up, right? Same thing. It tried to pull down to 369, but then buyers came in and pushed the price up. Same thing here. Buyers came in and pushed the price up. So that's how you can tell like, hey, 369 is a good area of support as well as 376 is a good area of support. Because again, when you look, you got buying, buying, some buying, 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 buying. Like there's a whole bunch of buying. Now there is there was some selling, but these are kind of like shakeouts um, is how you can view them. Like these are shakeouts because ultimately what happens is you go up, come down, but then you keep going up, right? Same thing. Now let's go to the higher levels. Now, some people would say, well, you have 389, you got buying up here. You do, but look at the struggle, right? Every time you get a little bit of life, it's coming back down, coming back down. You got a little bit of life, came back down. A little bit of life, a little bit of life came. It, it just never 
uh, can get higher than that 394. So that's how you know this is an area of resistance because it's really struggling to get past this 389. And then ultimately what happens is we had that big breakdown for the correction. So, you know, ultimately we broke down to about 379, right? 379, which is our 50 day in May, but we, we didn't necessarily get close to our support of 376. But this is what I mean by multiple levels of support, because if I break it down to say a four hour chart, maybe 379, 380 is one of those areas of support. So again, take it, take this with a little bit of grain of, grain of salt, simply because I'm only using daily and weekly um, time frames, and so the support and resistance levels on these time frames are, will be a little bit different versus a four-hour chart because on a four-hour chart you have, you know, basically you're you're squishing it down. Um, so that support and resistance, I feel like I rambled that, but I just don't know how much simpler I can make support and resistance. Um, so let's just do a quick recap, and maybe what I'll do is we'll go to the queues. Uh, let's go to the queues and let's do support resistance on the queues uh, and do the same thing. So I'm gonna remove my levels here uh, that I have marked. And let's just say, for example purposes, we're looking at the queues and we wanna find support and resistance again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our cheat code. I'm gonna get this out of there. So we're gonna use our cheat code. We're gonna turn it to the line graph. And then ultimately what I like to do is start from most recent and work my way back, right? So uh, I can see ultimately what I like to do is go from bottom to top as well. So I'm going to place a, uh, res a support line here because ultimately what I see is we got here and we bounced, right? And what I like to do then is I want to kind of look at history, see do I have any other critical like touch points? And I do back here in September. So literally you can see September's peak was here and now we have March's uh, valley is here. So literally, we came right back to where we was in September. Um, now that I know that, the next thing I like to do is I'll mark resistance, right? So resistance for the QQQs is at 336. This is as high as we've made it so far on the uh, Qs. So what that does is that gives me a trading, a total trading range of about 300 to 336 for for the triple Qs, right? Now what I need to do is go in and figure out, okay, what are gonna be my other bounce, my other areas of support and what are gonna be my other areas of resistance? Now, based on what we see here, I can say, ultimately, as you can see, we got a bounce here. It started to look like we're gonna get a bounce here. We had a bounce here. We got a bounce here. And as you can see, there's also a touch and a touch, right? So there's multiple touch points in this area. Now we don't know if this is support or resistance yet, but we're gonna figure that out in a second. The main thing I'm doing is just to kind of using the, the line graph to figure out so I can get in that general area. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another uh, level here, right at 322, because we have a touch point here, a touch point here, a touch point here, a touch point here. And you can kind of say it got close here, but ultimately when I change it back to candles, you'll understand why I'm making the assumptions I'm making. So let's just say I leave just these four levels, right? What I'm gonna ultimately do is change it back to candles. Now, when I change it back to candlesticks, now what I can do is I can redefine my levels, of, my levels of support and resistance. So ultimately what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this 299 to about 300 because ultimately I'm looking at where we closed on this candle, what was the low on this candle. And then you can see uh, here, you got, we pretty much open, we had some touches, we had about a touch here. And then you can see ultimately this was prior resistance, right? Back in November, September, 300 was basically resistance. We could not get through and ultimately we broke through, we retested and then we, we began to, to keep going. And now we're coming back to retest 300 to make sure 300 is sound support. So 300, 299 is support. The next level of support was ultimately around 307, right? So at first we were at 310, but the reason why I move it to 307 is because I can see we opened here and we got buying pressure to close up here. So 307 is ultimately a great buying spot. Same thing here. We opened at 307, we got a little bit of push up. Same thing here. Now I can go back into history and use more 
touch points to see like, hey, is this viable? So basically, we ran up to about 307. We got pushed back down to, to, to this 300. So this was once resistance, but now it's becoming support, right? So now we can say 307 is a level of support. So I'm gonna make that yellow. Now, ultimately, what we're gonna be looking to do is 322. 322, uh, let's actually, we'll move it to a, right around where the 50 day exponential moving at. So 320, right? 320 is essentially resistance because as you can see, when we get here, when we break through, we can never really hold uh, too high, right? We, we just don't hold it well. We got here. We, we had, you know, we had some pressure to close here, but then we just came right back down and it's looked like it's pushing down to that 307. Same situation when we go back in time, right? So as we started this, this downtrend, uh, we, we, we basically came back down to about 311, 310. We got a bounce, but we could not hold above this 320 area. This basically is like 325 to 320, right? Uh, and we, we came back down to about 310. We got another bounce up and then ultimately we had that whole, you know, debacle <laughs> that basically happened. So if you really want, you could do something like, you know, 310. And this, when you add in another level, ultimately all that does is help you find your trading zones, right? So you can set your alarm at three, your alert at 310 and ultimately and say, hey, let me see if it gets to 307. If it doesn't, I'm in a good buying area, right? Because ultimately we know 307 is support as well as 300 is support. So you know, that's another way you can look at support and resistance um, is to help you like set up your trading zones as well. So um, ultimately, guys, that's just another example of how you could uh, look at support and resistance. Uh, we did both the Qs as well as the SPY. Uh, if you have any questions about support resistance or you want to add anything, feel free to drop a comment below. Um, I feel like I try to make support resistance as simple as possible. I know some people might want to make it even more technical, but again, I, I'm, I'm just straight to the point. I, I like to use cheat codes and stuff like that. If I wanted, again, I know some people may say, hey, what about day trading? Just to kind of show you, if I went down to one hour, you basically want to do the same thing. You know, you would uh, basically come in, you know, change it to, uh, 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 change it to a line. And then now you can see now you can see more ups and dips. And that's basically as a day trader, how you can go in and find your support and resistance level. So again, guys, I didn't want to make this episode too long. I hope you got some good gems. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. And All right, family. So that was the very first episode of Setup Sunday. So look, I need you guys to comment below what you liked, what you didn't like. If I need to re-explain something or go slower Definitely, I need some feedback so that way I can improve the series as we go forward. But at the end of the day, I hope you guys got some value out of it. If you did, don't forget to press that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. And as usual, guys, we'll be back next week. Same time, 3 o'clock, with another lesson of the day, another chart of the day, as well as what to look for in the week ahead. So without further ado, you guys know the phrase, stay blessed. Peace out. We out for generational wealth. Who else but us? Run it up, run it up, run it up. This is first gen wealth building. Who else but us? Who else but us? Who else but us?